IndyCar issued a heavy penalty to Team Penske on Wednesday, which included stripping Joseph Newgarden of his St. Pete win and handing that to Pato Award. All right, everybody, welcome back. This is Bray Car, and my name is Matt, and IndyCar has absolutely hammered Team Penske for violating the push to pass parameters back at the opening round in St. Pete over six weeks ago at this point. They have went ahead and stripped Joseph Newgarden of his victory. They've now handed the victory to Pato Award and McLaren who get their first victory since Iowa 2022 and they went winless last season although they probably should have won St. Pete if it wasn't for the plenum backfiring. But for Team Penske, Joseph Newgarden disqualified from the race, stripped of all his points, stripped of the win and fined $25,000. Scott McLaughlin in the number three car, the number the third place finisher, rounding out the podium, also disqualified, stripped of his points, $25,000 fine. Will Power did not lose his finishing position, but was fined 10 points. So what happened here? Well, during morning warmups on Sunday at the Long Beach Grand Prix, IndyCar noticed something weird about the Penske cars. So they went and looked at it and they were able to hit their push to pass on starts and restarts. The software didn't, you know, restrict them from doing that. So they said, okay, they went ahead and went back and looked at the data from St. Pete and they discovered that Team Penske had circumvented the rules there and they had manipulated the system in such a way that their cars would be able to use push to pass on starts and restarts, which typically that button does not become actionable uh, for lack of a better term until IndyCar decides. So basically three quarters of the way through the lap, whenever they get back to the alternate start finish line, that's when that button becomes available. However, the Penske cars were able to hit that button whenever they wanted on starts and restarts. Did it help them win the race? Eh, you can, you know, make a case yes or no for there. But IndyCar did determine that the number two and the number three cars gained a competitive advantage using push to pass on the restart, where the 12 car of willpower did not. That's why there's a difference in the penalties there. So... Those cars were disqualified. Joseph Newgarden goes from leading the points after Long Beach to now sitting down 11th in points, a full race behind at this point. Not exactly the start to the championship season he wanted after unfollowing everybody on social media to make sure that his life was streamlined so he could focus on winning this championship. And now they get hammered with a massive penalty. And it's a penalty that absolutely needed to be assessed. Of course, if you have a team that is circumventing the rules, if they've found out a way to manipulate the system, they need to be penalized, even if their team owner owns the series in which they compete in. And there's some argument to be made that maybe they got hammered with a heavier penalty to make sure that the public perception of Penske owning a team that races in the series that he also owns isn't allowed to get away and break the rules. There's an argument to be made for that. However, IndyCar did cite both of their... Uh, rule book violations, uh, race procedure penalty 9.2.2, as well as driver and car in the posting results with a disqualification. Oh, the right to reposition, sorry, which is 9.2.2.6, if you would like to go look at the IndyCar rule book. So they almost got away with it. And on the Team Penske side, they have responded. They have put out a statement on Wednesday morning as well. Team President Tim Sendrick had some things to say. <laughs> And I'll just read it off for you right here. You can also see the graphic. Unfortunately, the push-to-pass software was not removed as it should have been following the recently completed hybrid testing in the Team Penske Indy cars. This software allowed for push-to-pass to be deployed during the restarts at St. Petersburg Grand Prix race when it should not have been permitted. The number two car driven by Joseph Newgarden and the number three car driven by Scott McLaughlin both deployed push-to-pass on restarts, which violated IndyCar rules. Team Penske accepts the penalties applied by IndyCar. Team Sunder, president of Team Penske. So they admitted to it. They're like, hey, listen, hand up. They did violate it. Here's the thing, though. They say that the software wasn't removed from the hybrid testing. Okay. Let's say it wasn't removed. That was six weeks ago back at St. Pete. That means we also went to Thermal, another race that happened. Then we go to Long Beach, another race that happens, and it still hasn't been removed from it. Curious. Just a curious case. I'm sure it's just a coincidence. I think the biggest and most damning evidence here is the fact that they acknowledge that it was used on starts and restarts, which to me, and I think to a lot of people, seems to indicate that they knew they could get away with this, right? Because if they didn't know that they could get away with this, why were they hitting it in the first place? And maybe it's just a natural reaction. Maybe you just hit that button because you want to have it. Like it's one of those things where you're just like, I just want to have it. And you just keep pressing the button like you're playing a video game until finally it unlocks and you get that extra 50 horsepower. Maybe, just maybe. But at the same time, if you're hitting the button, why are you hitting the button? Is anybody else hitting the button? 
Uh, not 100% sure. But for Team Penske, this is not a very good look, especially at a time where they came out swinging at St. Pete. I mean, Joseph Newgarden won that race handily. On just pure pace alone, he likely wins that race even without manipulating and violating the push-to-pass um, rules. But you don't need to do that. They had all the speed for it. So it's interesting to see kind of both sides of it. But credit to IndyCar for going back and investigating this six weeks after the race, first race of the year, six weeks after this happened. They very much, they very well could have just been like, hey, we saw this violation at Long Beach. We went ahead and told them that they had to fix it. This and that didn't use it in the race. We're fine. I, you have to question now. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. We don't have to question that. But good for them for going back and investigating it and issuing this penalty, even though it's six weeks later. That's a step in the right direction. That's how rules should be applied. If you're going to have a rule book, you have to enforce the rules. NASCAR refuses to go back and review a restart three minutes after a race, even though that they admitted that, you know, Denny Hamlin jumps the restart and he should have been penalized for that. They refuse to do that. IndyCar is like, we'll go back six weeks at this point and penalize you for doing some dumb things like this. That's good. You need that level of integrity, that level of competency, which is something we don't say about IndyCar a lot. This is an IndyCar win. At the end of the day, does it look bad that you have to strip the win of the driver from a race six weeks ago? Visually, it's not the greatest, but it does uphold the integrity of the sport. And that is a massive win for IndyCar. It's a good thing that they did this. And this isn't anti-Joseph Newgarden, anti-Team Penske. They're very good. They're the best out there. This is just, if you're going to have the rules for one, you have to have the rules for all. And if you're going to have a rule book, you have to apply that rule book. And it's not a judgment call. It's not a like, well, in this case, yeah, we probably would have called it if it was if we discovered it earlier. No, 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 not like that. I love the people over at NASCAR. I think they have good people in great positions. They don't apply the rule book efficiently at all or effectively. Neither of those, honestly. So good for IndyCar for getting this done. For Pato Award and McLaren, that's a huge win for them, right? Like I said, first win since 2022. Massive, massive accomplishment for for them. So Pato Award ends up winning the race. Will Power moves up to second, or he stays second, rather. Well, no, he does move up to second. And then Colton Herta is now your third place finisher uh, in that race. So Colton Herta, um, once again, back to back podiums for him. He now sits second in the IndyCar Championship, two points behind now points leader Scott Dixon. Alex Pillow is third, 67 points uh, on the season. He is uh, 13 points behind Scott Dixon. Like I said, Joseph Newgarden is now 11th with only 34 points on the season. Not ideal for him. And Scott McLaughlin is now 29th in points, five total points. He is dead last in the championship standings. That is not ideal. Not at all for him. So hats off to IndyCar for making the right call. And I think this is a great deterrent for everybody else to make sure you don't cheat because they will take wins away, not just after the race, not just days after the race, not even just a month after the race, literal six weeks, two month and a half after a race, they're willing to take wins away. So good for IndyCar. Let me know in the comments what you think. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.